Since he was a young boy, Mick Lears dreamed of owning a hot rod. So when he finally saved up the money to refurbish his 1953 ute, he was all revved up. But now everything has stalled. Mick's pride and joy is locked in a costly court fight. Taken such a, a lovely project and, and something that I enjoyed passionately, and my family enjoyed passionately, and they've destroyed it. From a distance, Mick Lear's car looks like any rev head's dream, but for this Ford lover, it's his nightmare. Um, it's now uh, my, my disappointment, unfortunately. Graham, we just wanted to speak to you about Mick Lear's mainline ute that you were meant to be restoring. It's got nothing to do with you. When Mick bought the mainline ute in 2004, it was a refurbishment dream in the making. I always wanted to have a car that had a, a supercharger. I'd never had one before in my life, and I was in that point in my life that I could afford to do it. After a decade of saving up the money, Mick wanted a company that could do a full custom rebuild to make the ute into a street show car. Osrods was one of those companies, and uh, they offered uh, a service to be able to do it all in-house, and certainly sold, the, sold it home to us that they were the people to, to do the job. So in January 2014, Mick left his car with Osrods in Logan, Queensland. The brief to build a showstopper that would be ready in 12 months' time for the Summer Nats car show. I need the car that had a, a supercharged motor in it and I always wanted to have big fat tyres and um, I wanted to be able to drop it down on air suspension down onto the ground and I just wanted something that looked cool. As the deadline approached, the build was behind schedule. Mick says it was 95% complete, enough to take it and show it off at Summer Nats. But unfortunately, the car itself only lasted a couple of days there before it broke down. Um, there was some uh, mechanical linkage issues that the engineering side of things that, that failed. On his return, Mick took the car back to Osrods to fix, which would start a near two-year battle to make the car roadworthy. The car would break down or we'd find other issues and that with it and we'd have to return it again. And, and within that two-year period, um, we only actually had the car for 54 days in our possession. And the price tag at the end of it all? Well, that was pretty embarrassing in all honesty. So um, I actually paid Osrods themselves $440,000 for that car to be refurbished. Unable to get Osrods to complete the refurbishment correctly, Mick took his car back and started legal action. But emotionally, um, it, it's taken a toll and all that as well. And you know, my, my wife just refers to the shed as the shed of disappointment. Since 2017, the car has been collecting dust in Mick's garage. So this is the most expensive car you own and you can't drive it? It is, yes, this is it. This is my 1953 Ford Mainline Ute. This uh, is your pride and joy? It is my pride and joy. It certainly was my pride and joy. The car no longer starts, the electrics are shot and the paint job disastrous. The car's been deemed dangerous and unsafe to drive by engineers. An independent engineer's report placed blue tape on the ute for every defect found. There's 450 pages that says that do not drive this car. Mick took legal action against Osrods for breach of contract. While Osrods filed a defence, it failed to show up to the trial, with the judge ruling Osrods had breached its contract, describing the work as dangerously inadequate. The judge awarded Mick $471,240 for the works, plus interest and legal costs, amounting to a near $850,000 bill Osrods and its director, Graham Parmenter, now owes Mick Lear. If the money's not paid, he can move and tip it into liquidation, but it's not a matter of simply pressing a button and liquidating the company. There's a whole new court case to go through in order to do that. Complicating matters is that director, Graham Parmenter, has appointed himself controller of the company's debts, a supposed independent role, which means he's now listed as a creditor if the business goes under. Lawyer Richard Mitri. I don't think there'd be any independence whatsoever there. Um, and the fact that it happened the day before the hearing, in circumstances where that company was going to have to potentially pay $600,000, which it now does, in fact, have to pay, uh, it just stinks. I think the court's 
shown that it doesn't was... doesn't matter what the court says, mate. Get off your property. We'll leave, but the See, court I... says it was dangerously inadequate. Yeah, the court work. didn't say. That was his get engineer that couldn't... The write... court agreed with it. No, you... The well, judge agreed with it. Said your right. work here was dangerously See, I... inadequate. So you're going to mute yourself somewhere else. We caught up with Graham Parmenter at his workshop, who continued to make excuses that Mick had moved the goalposts. You didn't, you didn't bother to show up to court, though, and argue your case. What's the point? I ain't got $150,000, mate. That's why I'm still here working. Why'd you continue the job, then? Why didn't you just cut your losses, then, and walk away? Well, I didn't take the job on. People that are employed did. It, it's your business, though. Well, that's my business, so, it, so be it. I don't believe that we're going to get a cent out of them. Mick will now need to take his prized car elsewhere for a new complete refurbishment. Osrods has until Monday to pay up, but Mick says that won't be the end of this battle. They failed to, to meet their end of the agreement and it's my obligation to be able to make sure that they're held accountable for that. And as it stands today, that money is yet to be paid to Mick.